Hi, uh, thanks for sticking around. Whoa, that's really loud. Um, thanks for sticking around after the break. Um, my name is Micah Hendler. Um, I'm actually from Washington, D.C., but I go to school in Connecticut. Um, I'm a senior at Yale University, majoring in music and international studies. Um, and uh, as you just heard, I'm hoping to start an Israeli-Palestinian youth choir in Jerusalem next year. So as, as my project is a, a musical one, as well as a conflict resolution one, I figured we would do uh, some singing um, ourselves. Uh, so uh, please humor me in this. Um, I promise it will be fun. So repeat after me. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the ones we've been for. Cool. So those are the words. Very simple. So here it goes. We are the ones we've been waiting for. Sing that. We are the ones we've been waiting for. One more time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. One more time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. Great. So that was awesome. That wasn't so hard. So that's part one. So now, um, uh, so that's great. So uh, for now, this half of the audience, you guys will sing that. Part two, here's your part. It goes, we are the ones, we are the ones waiting. Yeah, so sing that with me. Ready? And we are the ones, we are the ones waiting. And then it cycles. So we'll do that again. We are the ones, we are the ones waiting. We are the ones again. We are the ones waiting. We are the ones last time. We are the ones waiting. Great. So let's see if we can put those two together. Yeah? So I'm going to start you guys. We are the ones we've been waiting for. And then I'll bring you guys in. And when I bring you in, you guys stay. Keep, keep singing your part. Yeah? So here you go. We, we are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the ones. We are the ones waiting. We are the ones. We are the ones waiting. We are the ones. Great. Awesome. So that's two parts. We got two more. Um, <laughs> so back half of the audience, you guys are going to sing this. So basically, like you, back half of the audience starting, I'd say last like four rows, you guys abandon your allegiances to your old parts, and you're going to sing this new third part. It goes like this. We are the ones. We are the ones. We've been waiting. So that's how it goes. So sing that with me. Ready? And we are the ones, we are the ones, we've been waiting. Again, we are the ones, we are the ones, we've been waiting. One more time. We are the ones, we are the ones, we've been waiting. Great. So this, uh, all right, so this half of the back row is going to sing that. And this half of the back row is going to sing something that has the same rhythm but a different melody line. So it goes like this. We are the ones, we are the ones, we've been waiting. So do that. Ready? And we are the ones, we are the ones, we've been waiting. Or we are the ones, we are the ones, we've been waiting. Whatever's easiest for you. Can we try that again? Ready? And we are the ones. We are the ones we've been waiting. One more time. We are the ones, we are the ones we've been waiting. Cool, let's combine those last two parts and then we'll come back to one and two and put it all together and then I'll actually talk about what I'm trying to talk about. So, uh, so here we go. We are the ones, we are the ones, these last two parts. Ready? And we are the ones, we are the ones we've been waiting. That's that part. And we are the ones. We are the ones we've been waiting. Great. So that's good enough for now. Um, so let's put all of them together. So here's how it's going to work. I'm basically going to start with this part, and then I'll add this part. This part keeps singing. Then I'm going to add this part. These two parts keep singing. And then I'm going to come back to the melody at the very beginning, and everyone else keeps singing. And uh, then we will have uh, done a really cool thing. So, uh, so let's start uh, back here in this corner. We are the ones. Ready? And. We are the ones, we are the ones, we've been waiting. We are the ones, keep that going. You guys ready? We are the ones, we are the ones, we've been waiting. We are the ones, great. We are the ones, we 
are the ones waiting, we are the ones, yeah? We are the ones waiting, we are, we are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the ones we've been waiting for. Go on. All right, last time. Great. Yeah, so that was awesome. Wow, that was that was that was way better than I than I had sort of feared in the nightmares that I had last night. Um, that was that was really remarkable. Um, so so yeah, so that was fun. Um, but when I when I told most of you that I was going to be teaching you to sing today instead of singing myself, um, I know a number of you are very skeptical. But now that you've done that, think about the fact that now you probably feel just a little bit closer to the person that you're sitting next to than you did before. And you may feel a connection to the people in this room as a, as a, as a collective, particularly uh, people who are not amends delegates, that you probably definitely didn't feel before because you hadn't really shared anything. You were just kind of listening to people talk. But now you've sort of done something together. Um, so th it's that power to bring people together that music has that I'm hoping to tap into with my project. Specifically, um, in, in its current um, iteration as an Israeli-Palestinian youth choir and dialogue program in Jerusalem, I'm hoping to explore how this power can be used to transcend boundaries of ethnic conflict. So why might I think that such a thing is even possible? Um, like, this is really fun, like we're all delegates at this thing, but like, if, if there are kids who are coming from different places and they hate each other, like, what does music have to do with that? Um, well, I, I have, I've, I've been involved uh, for a number of years with an organization called Seeds of Peace, um, and Seeds of Peace uses music very effectively to do exactly that. So I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about the program. Seeds of Peace um, is a summer camp and dialogue program for teens from ethnic conflict regions, um, Middle East and North Africa, um, South Asia, and there are some Americans who come to teach baseball. Um, it's a really great uh, uh, program. And ultimately, uh, the, the, the campers who come are selected by their government's ministries of education, essentially on, their, on, their, on the basis of how good they are at defending national policy, history, and identity, and claims. Basically come to represent their nations um, and their nation's policies at this camp. However, when they arrive, they, they see over the course of a three-week session that the kids that they thought were supposed to be their enemies could actually be their friends, surprise. And more importantly, through a combination not only of summer camp activities but also of facilitated dialogue, they learn that these new friends and their communities also have narratives, histories, and claims of their own that are just as valid as yours, and also have suffered that they've also suffered as a result of the conflict. And that fundamental realization of common humanity is incredibly important and is the seed from which actual genuine dialogue and understanding can grow. However, from the constraints of one's national identities, which are often based on mutual nullification, that realization, that concession that someone else has suffered and you might have had something to do with it in a, in a, in a zero-sum game like that is something that you just can't do. Like, as, 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 as a, a representative of your nationality, that's a sacrifice you cannot make. And so Seeds of Peace um, instead comes up with a new identity for everyone who comes to camp, the identity of the seed. So basically, if you come to camp, you are no longer Israeli or Arab solely. You still have those identities, but you're also a seed. And everyone is a seed together. And just as your nationality has expectations for how you should behave, um, being a seed also carries expectations with it. You're supposed to listen before speaking. You're supposed to exercise compassion and empathy for other seeds and work together with them to solve problems. And so that's very important. But so how, how does that identity get reinforced? How, how do you know that just because you're supposed to reach out to somebody, that if you do, that they'll reach out to you in return? Through the creation of a strong community of seeds. And that's where music comes in, because music reinforces and strengthens this identity and substantiates it to be something that can actually create the space for dialogue to happen. So I'll give you a couple of examples. So from the moment that campers arrive, they are welcomed by a huge celebration of drumming and dancing. And when I was a music counselor at camp two summers ago, one Palestinian 
um, I think he was from Nablus, came up to me and said, wow, this was so awesome. I felt at home in the first 10 minutes of camp. So that's one example. Day two, everyone's taught the Seeds of Peace song called I Am a Seed of Peace, which not surprisingly reaffirms the identity of the Seed of Peace, hence I Am a Seed of Peace. And specifically reaffirms that seeds will be there to support one another, even in difficult tasks that they undertake. Um, and so this song specifically fu functions like a kind of anthem. And one of, the, one of the campers that I had also in 2009 in America mentioned, well, so if everyone has their own national anthem and they're really proud of that, then if you sing the Seeds of Peace anthem, then everyone's proud of the same thing. And that's exactly the way it works. And so as the Seeds of Peace song is repeated at different at different moments sort of in the camp process and also back home as Seeds of Peace has follow-up programming and the, and the song is used to sort of recreate some of that space of camp back home in the region, it's a very powerful tool at enabling this kind of dialogue to take place. So we've now sung together, so you guys understand sort of what I'm talking about, you felt it. I've now explained how this kind of process can be used in the context of an ethnic conflict. And so I'll just talk a little bit about my, my current project, which is trying to sort of apply all of this um, on the ground in Jerusalem in a sustained uh, project that brings Israeli and Palestinian high school students from East and West Jerusalem together twice a week um, at the Jerusalem YMCA for, a, uh, for both singing and dialogue. So, Obviously, when you're trying to do anything that brings Israelis and Palestinians together on the ground, it's almost impossible. There are unlimited social, psychological, geographical, geopolitical, logistical, any, any difficulty you can possibly name, it's there. Um, but even beyond the obvious ones, I see three major challenges for my project. The first is figuring out what kind of music we're going to sing. We have to start, hopefully, with music that is safe enough and distant enough from the conflict that people can feel really comfortable singing it immediately, yet also end up singing music that is relevant to the conflict and can actually say something about people's abilities to coexist and the, perhaps the common ground between cultures. So that's hard. Number two, you have to convince kids that they want to join the choir, particularly when everyone in their societies is telling them it's probably a bad idea. And most importantly, you have to convince their parents that it's safe for them to join the choir and that it's something that their parents should want for their kids. Because as you know, like as a high school kid, how often did you actually want to go to soccer practice, and how often did your mom make you go to soccer practice? So the third and most important issue is that of normalization. Um, and normalization is a problem that essentially the, the argument by the, by the sort of Palestinian community that, um, that holds to it is essentially that any project um, where Israelis and Palestinians work together um, but is not specifically and exclusively focused on ending the occupation of the West Bank and Gaza, is essentially um, against Palestinian national aspirations um, and therefore should not be done. And so that is a fairly widely adhered to argument and has a, has a, lot, of, has a lot of weight to it. Um, so I'm going to need to find ways specifically of, in, of ingraining my project, integrating it with the needs of the local communities in such a way that I can show that my project is actually benefiting the, the local people. So obviously there are a bunch of challenges. I don't have strategies uh, that I can elaborate now necessarily on all of them as we're running out of time. But um, I'm certainly open to any of your ideas, particularly delegates as continuing discussions go on, if you have any ideas specifically about how I could make my project better. But I hope that certainly in this talk I've convinced you both because we've done it now and um, through the other uh, work that I've done, that if I can actually get these kids together in the same space and I can get them singing, then I can get them to become friends. And if I can get them to become friends, then I can get them to engage in open and honest dialogue, in which case they might actually be able to come to understand one another. And that understanding is the basis upon which they can actually become the leaders for peace in their respective societies and communities. Thanks. Thank you.